It is uh, Wednesday, August 5th at 7.07. Uh, this is a meeting of the Marina Advisory Committee uh, via Zoom. So we'll begin with um, announcements, uh, open session, any public comments. Does anybody have anything? None. None? Okay. Um, I emailed all of you the minutes from the last meeting, July 8th. And by the way, for this meeting, just bear with me. I'm going a little slow because I'm also taking the minutes. Um, so we have before us the minutes from July 8th. Has everybody uh, reviewed them? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, Martha just entered. Martha, are you on? Um, Courtney, can you unmute her, please? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what just happened. Uh, something just happened and it flipped off. Okay. okay. There you um, we are addressing the minutes from the last meeting, July 8th. Have you had a chance to review them, Martha? Yes. Okay. All right. Are there any um, corrections or amendments to these minutes? Okay. Hearing none, do we have a motion? I'll make, I'll a, make motion. a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Okay, then I'll second it. Walter and seconded by Martha. Um, Okay, um, all of all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, uh, any no's? Okay, hearing none, the minutes are accepted and recorded. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Harbor Master Report. Will? Sure. Uh, busy, busy month. Um, not much, not much going on with the storm, obviously. Uh, otherwise, the month very busy. A lot of new, very new boaters coming into the harbor. Uh, a lot of new, a lot of new people bought boats, and they're. Uh, I don't know if you've been down on a, on a Saturday, you Saturday morning, you've seen them all. Um, it's. It's very busy and very, uh, it's a learning experience for most people going on right now, uh, which is added to the, the mix a little bit. Uh, other than that, pretty much business as usual for the summer. Um, we're still trying to chase down the computer problems. Uh, now they're going to at the, I don't even know what you call it, whatever sends the data over towards the water tower, whatever machine that is. They're gonna check that Motor out now. To, router? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, it's all that stuff. They, they're going through all that now to see why it's not connecting. Because in order to get to the gas booth, you need to go from the computer upstairs out to the water tower, to the fire station, back to the water tower, over to the beach department, then wireless over to the fuel shed. So there's a lot of uh, missing and moving pieces in that. And uh, county, who is our does our tech for the town, has been working on that. Um, they were working on that the other day for I don't know three or four hours, trying to re-download the the old program, which we're still doing fuel on uh, for that. The new program only runs um, via the internet. It doesn't need to have a network per se with the other computers. Uh, you know, you can do it on your, your phone, but the only problem is separating in order to use that for fuel, we can do it. But how we have it set up is that it charges a processing fee for credit cards to the, the user, um, which is fine for your one-time payment of your slip or, you know, big money like that. Um, if you want to pay by credit card, but with being a gas stock, if we had to charge every user and tell every user, we just didn't um, really want to face every one of them complaining about the, you know, 
uh, couple percent uh, fee to be. I mean, even on a uh, overnight charge, people are, you know, but hey, you know, the, the town, um, you know, the marina shouldn't be picking up the, the fee if you want to use your card and get your miles or whatever. So you can always pay by cash or check. So um, that's how we've kind of arranged that. We've kept the old system in place in order to do uh, the fuel still. How much is the fee, Will? Um, I think it's around 3%. Um, but then again, on a, on a $10 launch, it's a buck 50. So that would be a percent and a half. Um, so it's, it's not much. It's not much at all, but um, any penny more. You know, the other thought was we could raise fuel prices to uh, accommodate for that and take the fee off, but we can't separate whether it charges a fee or not um, between different items. But because uh, obviously on all the $2,000 slips, we don't want to be paying the fee uh, for that to be able to use a credit card. So, so that's this, is the, this is the fee that the credit card company is charging the marina? The user. The user. Uh, before, with the other software and the regular credit card machine, the marina gets charged the fee. The, you know, the, um, the, the company, you know, like going to a store, uh, the company stop and shop, let's say, would have to pay the fee when you use your credit card. So it will come out of that sale. As opposed to our new system, they, the user charges a processing fee. Um, yeah, this is a new thing. I mean, I have credit card stuff for, for my, a little bit of my business and I pay the fees. But yeah. Right now there's a new, this new thing, like Will said, it's they're charging the fees to the user and not the vendor. Exactly. So your $10 is your $10. Yeah. As opposed to, uh, you know, selling a $10 launch and only making eight fifty dollars on it. Yeah, um, it's very popular yeah. with government. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> uh, it seems to work pretty good. Most people know about it now and don't, don't really care too much. Um, you know, if they're going to pay their slip and they don't want to pay it. Because you, if you use your credit card, you can pay remotely and take care of it all online. Otherwise, you have to mail a check and, um, you know, go back and forth which, you know, some people do still and some people don't, just depends on how they want to take care of it. Um, which also allows you, um, in some cases, to hold a card number on the processing. I know for some frequent users, they come in for ICE every other day or, you know, things like that. Their credit card is uh, stored with the processor um, because that's the way they set it up. And then you can just charge them. They don't have to present it every time. So it works out for some of them too. They can just say, you know, hey, Will, I need six bags of ice. And we say, oh, okay, and write it down and just charge it right to his card. And it keeps a list of all that nice and easy. He doesn't even have to present any payment because it's already there. So when a boater is paying the arena for his slip and uses his credit card, is the fee assessed to the boater? Yes, now. And is that three percent? It might be more like one and a half. Uh -huh. But yes. Yep. Okay. And what did you say about paying online as an alternative? You can pay online. You can also set up uh, a different way. Instead of using your credit credit card, you can set up direct through your bank with the uh, processor, which charges even less of a fee. Mm -hmm. So you can take care of all your uh, your slip payments and morning payments online. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments for discussion? Happen with dredging, or is that another article? Um, that's another article on the agenda. Uh, we're still on the Harbor Master report. Um, uh -huh. Will, do you do you have other items? Yeah, I know that um, the town has been asking Mike uh, for a specific retirement date. Um, he has told them December 31st. So that's the, the latest on that. And will he be on vacation until then? I don't know. Okay. But he has not been working, is that correct? No, no. Okay. 
Um, anything else, Will? No, no, I don't think so. Um, a bit of interesting. Uh, I don't know if anyone of you saw the uh, 37 foot um, C ray that we brought in the other day. That well, was uh, works. grounded on um, the outside of Billingsgate. Um, that was an interesting rescue. Mm. We were working with, um, we were called by the Coast Guard. All they have is the 40, uh, was it a 45 footer, 42 footer? Um, so obviously they couldn't get anywhere near it anyway, but uh, I was called personally by them. Um, while Tobo US from Provincetown also responded, we got there at approximately the same time. Um, we had used the shellfish department boat for that, um, which actually kind of worked out being a flat bottom uh, skiff, which we're very thankful that we had the availability of that boat to use. Um, and because we had to, we did have to go through the sluice and then cross over Billings Gate itself to get to the boat. Um, <laughs> which, you know, left us not much. Where were, where were they on the island? They were on the outside of the shoal. They hit the rock pile. Oh, That's really? Right. Going out. Right, right over the rock pile, put a big hole in their engine compartment. And, and uh, luckily it was shallow. Otherwise they, um, I mean, it was a high tide, a higher tide. Uh, they would have sank. But uh, otherwise it probably would have sank. When we got there, the bow was way up and the deck was wet. Um, Wow. We ran, <laughs> ran the two pumps the entire way. Wow. Because we were able to get it up off the bar. Um, because Those of the rocks pumps. are pretty well up. marked, too. Yeah, we got it up <laughs> over that. And we were debating whether to scull it on the bar or not. If we couldn't get it up, we would have had to. But um, the pumps worked. We got it up. Uh, Cito was the main uh, pilot of it, towing it in. We hooked alongside and just pumped, pumped the heck out of it. And uh, got it in, and, and Wellfleet Marine um, took care of it on the dock. Once we got it all drained out, they they pulled it up. It was quite a quite a scene at the harbor. Um, had to play a bit of traffic control there because people wanted to, uh, you know, uh, cross the ramp while they were trying to tow the truck up because the boat was big and the boat was full of water. So they were trying to get it up. So they needed to do like a. Uh, uh, couple trucks to pull it up out of, off the ramp and uh, that was a bit of traffic control because the people really did not um, want to give them any way uh, to go off the ramp but yeah that was a do you have anything else with on that accident on uh, last Sunday right in front of another in front of the ramp accident where the I don't know I think a guy backed into a car or with a trailer or something yeah, so a guy was backing up his boat um, down, going going down to the ramp or or in the ramp. I mean, the trailer, sorry, and uh, a car drove right in behind him and uh, jack, jacked up his trailer pretty good. Actually, we're still tending to his boat. We kind of gave him a little grace, uh, you know, and had been watching his boat because he's having trouble getting a trailer and trailer parts because his his trailer yeah. pretty messed up. So we've actually been tending to uh, his boat for him. Uh, keeping it on the mooring and now on a slip for the storm, obviously, but uh, until he can get that fixed. Um, yeah, that wasn't good. You know, the other person got written up and everything, but. Um, yeah, I, I, they were, I mean, there was barely enough room for a car to go by. Yeah. Back of the, tra back of the trailer. Yeah. That was, that was kind of stupid. It, um, it happens. I mean, the actual contact doesn't happen a lot, but that kind of situation is, uh, you know, with people wanting to go for their cruise down the end of the uh, oh, yeah. you know, trailer lot. Yeah. And, uh, Maybe there should be like a temporary sign that says yield to uh, ramp yeah, traffic, to traffic or something. Yeah, and we did, yeah we did. Yeah, uh, we did. We put a new reflective stripe down uh, for the trailers backing up. Um, That's good. And, uh, you know, but still, even with the no parking signs at the end of the ramp, you know, where you pull up against the uh, right. slips all the way forward, there's no parking signs there. And people are, we still have to constantly go there and tell people to move. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just, well, you know, stu it's, it's, stupid and tourists seem to go together. Uh, they, the, you know, um, they're the, in the, their world. And, um, you mm. know, people, the people person who drove try to drive behind the trailer and hit it. Was he local or out of town? Is he a boater? No, no, 
No, I, I don't know who he was, but I know he wasn't um, from here. Mm. Yeah, he okay. wasn't Florida. Um, anything else? No, no. Okay. In, in our last meeting, um, you outlined um, the re one of the rescue where the um, fire department responded and didn't really communicate much with you and um, you were going to have a meeting with them. Did that happen? Not as of yet. No, they've been, they've been pretty flat out themselves right now. So, um, um, I couldn't hear that. Could you repeat it? Yeah, so they, they've been pretty flat out themselves. So nothing's uh, come of that yet. Um, I think that'll probably be a, a going forward type of thing. Um, uh -huh. I know with, um, you know, that'll probably be, you know, I think that kind of stuff in, in the off season, we need to get a, uh, a better plan together with them um, to, to move forward a little better. Um, but again, you know, right now when they're, I mean, they can't even, you know, they can't even stay still for a minute right now. It's been, you know, we got the radios obviously blaring all day in there and, uh, you know, there, there isn't much time right now for, for much to do. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on to the, um, the dredging update on the um, agenda. Will, do you want to lead off on that? Sure. Um, I forget if, if, uh, did the bid, did we talk about that the last meeting that the bid get one? I forgot the date of the bid and the, um, this will be July 15th, I think. Yeah, yeah, so that was after the last meeting, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, yeah, the bids all, all, all has come back. There were uh, four bidders. Um, Cashman was the low bidder, I think by about a million dollars. Um, I think the other two came in uh, respectively around the, the government's estimate uh, of the four and a half. Cashman was about three and a half. Um, and then one came in at about seven. Um, so we are still on target for uh, October 1st, as far as we know, as far as we've been told. So that's still all to be expected. Did they award the bid? I haven't gotten any documentation on that yet. So I don't know. Have, 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 I don't think the task force either. Have, have they, Joe? Uh, I don't know because they haven't had a meeting in some time. Yeah. And there's been no communication from the chair to the task force members. Yeah, um, I I haven't gotten anything. So one thing about the dredging is obviously that we're working on the permitting for um, our our portion uh, dredging areas one and two. And what's coming up is the um, permitting for uh, we'll, we'll we'll just permitting for the mooring basin area, um, which is uh, being built up right now by National uh, Fish and Wildlife, National Marine Fisheries. Um, what, what they're saying is that they, they don't, they want to call it improvement dredging, not maintenance dredging, because it hasn't been done since uh, for a few years, um, which is coming up to be a problem for the permit for that because they don't want to release or sign off on, on a permit for that portion. Um, they want to see it, as they call it, restored to a, a native or productive mudflat. Um, they'll know our mudflats and well productive, our salmons are productive and well. Um, so we did have a meeting with uh, Alyssa, the, the uh, people who works for the engineers who has been dealing with the permitting. Um, we had a phone call into her last week and uh, one of the things I asked for um, was a list of uh, native species that they're looking at that are living in this mud. Uh, if they want to return it to native habitat, we'd like to uh, see a native species list of species that have been found in that area. Um, that's what I specifically asked for um, from them because I know that from our testing and, and, and the science that we've done in the past years, we're showing uh, not much living in that mud. Um, I know there's some different, you know, organic compounds and pathogens and things like that, uh, you know, microorganisms living in it. But um, 
as far as their list, I, there is, as far as we've seen, there's no science um, on their recommendation, um, which is kind of a, a pretty bogus thing, if you ask me, um, if they're going to hold this up based on uh, non-science. Um, and, and so until we see that. Also, one of the things I specifically requested from everyone um, in the meeting was that uh, they said they're working with the conservation department and things like that uh, for the permitting. But I did specifically request that all emails or communications be CC'd to the Harbor Master Office. Um, so that way we do have a clear and concise uh, communication chain uh, um, with the town, not just with the task force, with the engineer, with the state and federal government. I wanted everything um, at the very least uh, CC to our office um, so that we can know all communications that go back and forth. Um, we can keep a clear and concise record of that. And, you know, uh, that also allows us to have a bigger window and I can reference them for other reasons. So that's something else that came up in that, in that meeting with the engineers. And the, the problem with the mitigation is they're not counting any of, um, you, you know, normally an area like that, you, you'd mitigate, but take obviously like on the, the federal dredging, we mitigated that. Um, the dollar value is per acre and it's in the millions. Um, they don't consider um, any other native uh, habitat restorations. At this point, they have not considered any of them um, to be valid. Uh, Hill to Trust, Herring River, um, all the Audubon space, the area around Lieutenant's Island that's been uh, left to be. They're not considering any of that um, proper mitigation. So um, we're currently working on that. Anything else, Will? I don't think so. Okay, um, I'm gonna share information as a member of the dredging um, task force um, that I'm aware of. Um, after the last dredging meeting, um, there were some open ends. I needed some answers. So I called Chris. Um, Dennis Murphy is no longer on the committee, on the task force. So Chris, whether he's been designated or not, has been acting as chair and coordinating everything. And um, um, he, he started to get into um, the business about um, the dredging for area two being held up. Um, even though areas one and two are the responsibility of the state and the town, the Army Corps of Engineers has a footprint of those areas on the Inner Harbor. And there is some management involved on their part in that even though they are not an active player in dredging it, um, they have to get several federal agencies to sign off. And um, I expressed to Chris that my understanding was when we secured the um, state permits that the engineers had gotten the necessary sign-offs from all of the agencies. And what I was told was um, there was one agency that had not signed off, as Will said, the National Marines, Marine Fisheries um, Service, which is a federal agency. And he didn't have any information. And so we agreed that I would call Alyssa Richard, um, the, one of the engineers whom I worked with for several years, GEI. So I called GEI and I asked to speak with her. I was given the wrong extension and I was routed to a guy named Dan Robbins, who is the project engineer at GEI for the town of Wellfleet stretching project. He's the top guy. And um, 
Excuse me, oh, Joe. I'm Can sorry. you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Dave just texted me and he's trying to get into the meeting, but he doesn't have the Zoom uh, connection. Okay. All right. Bear with me for a sorry. minute. Sorry. I just, sent just it. Oh, fine. I'm glad you did. I sent it to him and I'm going to um, send it again right now. So hold on. Okay. Um, would you text him and tell him it's coming? Yep. Okay. I just sent it now. I would like to pause a minute because I, I'd like Dave to hear this. Yep. This update. Okay, so, let's see what happens. Supposed to be a nice day to be in the water tomorrow, according to the weather. Looks, looks like it's gonna be a lot less Humidity and a lot less heat, <laughs> thank goodness. That would be nice. Okay. Courtney, any sign of Dave coming on? There he is. I hear him. Uh, I just saw him. Uh, Courtney, can you unmute him? Courtney? Can you hear me, Joe? Yes, can you hear us? I can. Okay. okay. You're not uh, on video. Glad you could join us. You still hear us, Dave? I can hear you, yep. Okay. Um, we just started the uh, dredging section, and um, Will gave us an update from um, his perspective and what he knew, and I just started to share what I knew as a member of the dredging task force. After the last dredging meeting, um, there were some loose ends. There were, there were some, I think, questions that needed to be answered. And so I called the day after, I called the chair, Chris Alger, and, and we talked. And um, um, it seems that areas one and two, the inner harbor, which the state and town are responsible for, the Army Corps has a footprint of all of that plan and has to get certain federal agencies to sign off on. And one of the federal agencies is refusing to sign off on Area 2, okay? Just to backtrack for a minute, one thing we've learned through the years, the GEI engineers have not only told us, but also put it in writing, that if you don't dredge area two, you're wasting time and money to dredge area one because you're gonna be right back where you started. They call it a sucking sponge. So the, I, I called the engineer and I was um, directed to the project engineer, the, the boss who oversees it. And he confirmed that National Marine Fishery Service is refusing at this point to sign off on the permit to do area two. As, as Will said um, a few minutes ago, they're calling it a quote, beneficial mud flat, that it's improvement dredging. They are also questioning that it has been an active serving mooring field, if you can believe that. So well, was that we talked, I'm sorry. What'd you call it? I, I'd lie, I couldn't hear you. They're calling it uh, a beneficial mud flat. Okay. And, and then active something you said. Active. And they're saying, they're questioning that it has been an active mooring field. Oh, okay. So they're coming from a position that there's this beneficial mud flat, like Will was saying, with living organisms in it, that we suddenly want to turn into a mooring field, okay? So um, I, I zeroed in on that and, um, and asked, and given the fact that the history of this is in these discussions, we have always had a seat at the table. For most of it, it was Harry Turkanian, Paul Pilcher and myself, okay? Throughout the whole thing. 
we are barred at this point in time from having a seat at the table. The only representatives that National Marine Fishery Service will deal with right now um, is um, the Army Corps and GEI. And when this discussion ended, the project engineer at GEI told me that he and the Army Corps person overseeing it uh, we're going to advocate with National Marine Fisheries to allow us to have a seat at the table. I'm making an assumption that these people know <coughs> nothing about our area to mooring area, know nothing about the town, the fishing industry, and so forth. And he said at that point, this was a week and a half ago, they were not allowing us to have um, anybody at the table. He also told me that National Marine Fisheries confirmed to him that if we wanted it to be a mooring field, you have to pay them in mitigation, just like we had to pay the turtle people, commonly referred to by some people as extortion. And that payment in mitigation is based on the amount of square footage. They have a formula. Oh, man. The engineer told me that based on the amount of square footage in our mooring field, that, that their starting price is starting between 15 and $16 million. And That's ridiculous. Um, after I picked myself up off the floor, um, um, he assured me that he would be communicating further with Will, with the dredging committee, with the assistant TA for the town moving forward. Um, I don't believe that, or I don't know whether or not the chair of the dredging committee is privy to this information. I've not heard from him. I called him, I'm going to call him again to share what I know. I then called our lobbyist in Washington, D.C. A little bit of history. I recruited this guy four years ago. Terrific guy, did a great job for the town. It's generally conceded that without him, opening all the doors for us that he did, we never would have secured the federal money from the Congress to dredge the channel. I got to so that. he called me back and the, he represents many cities and towns with harbors on both the east. Are you there, Flip? No. Sorry, my son just walked out with a cheese steak and it was killing me. Sorry. Um, he, has, he has specialized in representing cities and towns with harbors who need dredging across the country on the east and west coast. When I laid this out to him, he told me he wasn't surprised that his experience is this is the number one agency on the federal level that is holding things up for various cities and towns that have dredging issues. I talked uh, with him about um, the idea of involving our congressional representatives. And he told me his advice at this time was to deal with Congressman Keating um, and not our two senators with all that is going on certainly until after the election. Um, he, he suggested that um, we continue to advocate for the town to have a seat at the table to represent us. Um, in the past, with these negotiations, we've had two or three people, you know, which I think is good, from a variety of disciplines representing the town. Um, but at this point in time, I have not heard any additional news um, 
And when I do, I will share it with you. Um, I'm sure you're as shocked as I am. Um, our lobbyist, when I inquired, um, said that this has started in the last few years. That they they jumped on the mitigation bandwagon as a way to supplement their budget, just like the turtle people did. Um, but the price is astounding. I have no reason not to believe the chief project engineer or GEI because he's been dealing with the Army Corps and only recently did National Marine Fisheries bring GEI into the loop. He made the comment that he thought we had a good advocate at the Army Corps. The previous director, Ed O'Donnell, retired and the new guy who's taking over seems to be um, a bit more aggressive in his approach advocating um, for dredging for their projects. Comments, questions? What about town council? Where's this stand on all this? Well, I, I don't know that it's a legal matter as much as it is becoming more of a political matter, okay? Um, and again, this is, this is, you know, when, when the turtle people started negotiations, the price was higher, but it certainly wasn't in the millions, okay? And we settled for $22,400, all right? Which we were happy to pay to get them to sign off completely. And we still have that, that all those state permits intact. But I knew nothing. I assume that's why I call the engineer. I assume that when the engineers secured the state permits, that at the same time they secured the federal permits. So it was a shock to me. And when I spoke with the project engineer, he told me that, you know, that wasn't the case and that it was the Army Corps' responsibility to get natural marine fisheries to sign off on it. And suddenly they are on the mitigation bandwagon. Now, Chris told me on the dredging committee that to prove that we've had a mooring field there for 200 years, he's been trying to get photographs of it. Just my, my opinion as a member of the dredging committee, I don't think the town of Wellfleet should have to prove anything. It's well established that that is a mooring field. It's well established with the $300,000 we pay the engineers to do all of the studies from core samples on up, that that is a living mooring field. It was also established when we got the state permit to do area two, that there was no issue with aquaculture or any other living organism. So, you know, it's, it just, it's mind boggling to me that they're starting out saying, well, you never really had a mooring feel there. Now, a little bit of history might, might be helpful here. Back five, six years ago, when we were going through this process with the state officials and specifically with the turtle people, okay, they were trying to tell us at the time that the mooring field, because it was last dredged in 1957, was now gonna be considered new dredging. At that time, the state of Massachusetts had all dredging issues in the state division of waterways. And at that time, Kevin Mooney was their chief engineer and was able to to push back on that and advocate and convince the turtle people that it was not new dredging, it was simply maintenance dredging from a long established mooring field. And he was successful in doing that. 
the division of waterways with their engineers is no longer involved. It is in the State Department of Economic Development. Okay? They don't have dredging engineers to advocate for this. Whenever an, another dredging meeting is called, you know, one of the things I'm going to advocate for is, is bringing forward the engineers who did this work for the town and get an answer as to why at that time they did not, which is three years ago, they did not move to secure the federal permit for National Marine Fisheries for areas one and two. I don't know the answer to that, but I, I can tell you, I think the town sure as hell should get an answer. That's Good the only thing I know. That we should what? Get an answer. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Well, uh, it's, it, we have undeniable proof that it has been a mooring field for, you know, as long as it's been a town almost. And, and uh, if in the, in the face of that, they persist in claiming it isn't, could, is there a possibility this could all wind up in court? Because I don't think we should have to pay, any, pay them anything. Well, my response to that is long before the town should look at any court action, and we've learned this from experience, we should utilize our elected representatives to advocate for us. After all, that worked on the state level, and this is a federal program, a federal agency. So that's where Keating would come in. And Keating, whoever's going to be the next U.S. Senator, Markey or Kennedy, or Senator Warren. Having been involved deeply in all of that, I can tell you that all three of them advocated strongly for the town and helped secure that federal money, okay? At that time, Markey was the chairman of the, Congre of the Senate committee that appointed the undersecretary of the Army who oversees the Army Corps of Engineers. Looking back, I think one flaw in the strategy was, you know, letting, letting Area 2 go in 2002 when Area, Area 1 was done. Both of them should have been done at the same time. Then there'd be no argument whether or not it is a viable mooring field. But as ridiculous as it sounds, the project engineer told me they were in the process of trying to prove to them, the federal agency, National Marine Fisheries, that it is a long-standing mooring field. He ended by telling me that if they accept that, they don't get a dime. There's no mitigation. It's maintenance dredging. No, they shouldn't get a dime. Well, it's all about money, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, a couple of things that I don't know. Um, I don't know that the Army Corps can't overrule them anyway. I, you know, I, I don't know that they will, but I, I don't know that they can't. Um, I don't know that they necessarily need them to sign off on it or there's just a normal process of having them sign off it. So I don't know. It, it's not clear whether they can just overrule National Marine Fisheries. In wildlife. Um, yeah, if I can inject, uh, it's sure. very clear to me, having been through that on the state and federal level starting six years ago, the Army Corps cannot. The Army Corps, and when it comes to the state and town level, when we secured the permits on the state level for areas one and two, it was made very clear to us that those various agencies, including the turtle agency, when I spoke to the director of it, and she said, I can shut you down at any time. All of those agencies on the state and federal level, water quality, fisheries, the project cannot move ahead without their signing off on the permits. 
And I would think if that was the case, then they would actually have to have uh, some proof or validity of what they are saying. Well, that's a good point because, you know, again, having been through this with the turtle people, they would come back and say, yeah, we'll prove it. We'll do core samples and studies. And like the turtle study, it'll take a year or two. Mm. My thought is do what has worked for us in the past, put congressional pressure on them. That's why our elected representatives are there to serve us in this capacity. And, and they were most willing to do it in the past. Unfortunately, right now, the good news is we don't need the signature immediately for, for area two. We're, we're gearing up as we should be. But right now, we don't even know who our next U.S. Senator is going to be, who our president is going to be, who is going to be the Secretary of the Army overseeing the Army Corps of Engineers. If you can believe the polls and, and the people who are predicting if there was a change in a national administration, um, the lobbyists indicated that that may well be to our benefit. Anybody have anything else? Anybody? This is uh, my little, 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 uh, little Anybody scared of the situation. Anybody um, picking out the bottle? Yeah, right. Um, so, I mean, there's got to be like just a regular hoop that everybody jumps through when these situations come up. I mean, I can't imagine that other towns haven't encountered this kind of situation somewhere along the line. Uh, unfortunately, we might be a little different because it's been years, but there's got to be a, a protocol of just we get, you know, like somebody behind us, like you were saying, maybe the, you, you go political and just get everybody to say, yes, this is the way it is. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Is there anybody else this has happened to? I mean, I, I, um, that's my question, I guess. Is there any other towns that have encountered this situation? Well, if they did, I'm not aware of them, but if they did, they'd have to have, you know, a, a part of their mooring field lined up dormant for a long time with this right. agency coming on to them. I mean, that's the uniqueness, I think, of our yeah. heart. I think like down in New Bedford, um, uh, Payton Aram and Nonquit, and there's some a lot, a lot of idle places on the South Shore that have not been dredged in years. And I mean, granted, they have a certain amount of uh, water, more so than we do, but they're filling in. And I know that these areas are going to be, they, they are dredged intermittently, but I don't know, I don't know specifically. I'm not, I don't want to get outside my box, but I'm just curious if there's, anybody else in Massachusetts that has had this situation happen. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we can figure that out somehow. I don't know. I, I think that would be a question for our congressmen and senators as we proceed down that path. They I mean, right now they're oblivious to this. I don't even know if the selectmen are aware of it. Right, right, right. As right. I said, I'm going to communicate this to the chair of the dredging committee, but right. you know, a, a huge red flag went up for me when I heard that at this point in time, we could not have a seat at the table. And that, that is contradictory to everything we've been able to achieve in the past. And again, I think part of what they're hanging their hat on given what the project engineer said to me was 1957 was a very long time ago. When area one and the channel were done in 2002, I'm not sure, but I think the reason why area two wasn't done was that the state said to the town, well, we'll give you the money for area one, but not two in the town didn't put their foot down and fight that battle. So for all these years, you know, we've had that mud flap. 
And it's been used as an active mooring field all these years. We sure have. Yeah. And it's, it's startling to me that we have to justify that. So what I would want to know if I was chairing this thing and calling the shots is when you pay the amount of money the town has paid to the engineers, why didn't the engineers secure the sign off working with the Army Corps at that time from National Marine Fisheries? Okay. Now, again, I'm speaking for myself as one member of the dredging committee, of which I think there are five dredging task force. Okay. I don't think the present course that the task force is taking is aggressive enough. I think we need to be more. I agree with that. I totally agree. As a town, I think it's ridiculous that they're making these decisions without our having a seat at the table. And, and again, that's where we have to formulate a plan. I'm going to say to the dredging committee and, and to the selectmen, if they want to hear it, you know, a careful plan where we advocate, like we did with all the agencies with the state permits, you know, advocate in such a way that we're not going to war um, and lose that battle. But on the other hand, we're not backing down. That's the strategy that has worked for us in the past. You got to take it one step at a time. If you throw bombs, you know, you're not going to end up getting what you want from these people. I got, got a question about the dredging committee. Joe? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, um, uh, the, the, the former chair, uh, Murray, is it? Murphy. Yeah, Murphy. Murphy. Dennis Murphy. Yeah, is, uh, are they planning on re replacing him, not as chair, but just to, you know, keeping the... I have no idea. I have no idea. I haven't even been officially told that he has left. I just heard that, okay? Because I'd like to throw my hat in if there is an opening. Uh, my brother's still on that committee? Yes. Did, did, did I come through? I didn't. Yes. Yeah, you came through. Yeah, we heard you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have an intermittent uh, connection, so I, that's why I wondered. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? You know, we... Um, We've, we've faced hurdles before. They're not insurmountable. They can make you very angry. But we took a step-by-step -step approach. We had good plans utilizing Sarah Peak, Julian Sear, and so forth. And, and, and they were extremely helpful. And our congressional delegation was the last time around, OK? So, you know, the last time around, Sarah Peak brought here the Secretary of Environmental Affairs and the official from the waterway at low tide, you know, and saw 150 boats out in Area 2 mooring field. So, you know, I'd be looking at doing something like that, you know, without having to jump through a lot of hoops to prove to these people that it hasn't been a vacant mud flat for the last 50 years. Now, the selectmen still don't know anything about this? I don't know, because I haven't heard from the dredging committee chair. Okay. I believe Janet's been copied in on most of the... Yeah, not for me she hasn't, and I don't know if Chris knows all this. I'm gonna contact him, because I think we should have a meeting pretty soon. One thing that uh, it seems would help prove our case there is uh, uh, we've got to have records going back God knows how far of people that have had moorings in that area. But more than that, John, we have, we have many engineering records, mm -hmm. okay? 
whereby they've surveyed it, where they photographed it, where they've done core samples in it. Right. You know, the whole nine yards. And, and we paid them to do that. So I'm going to say that a dredging committee, I think the next step is, you know, to have a sit down with them and find out what they did and didn't do. Right. Talk about proceeding. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the last uh, item? Nobody has any objections. Um, the last time we had a motion passed uh, that um, the Marina Committee would um, work with the Assistant Harbor Master in developing a plan for marina maintenance and the suggestion was accepted by everybody to submit their plans of um, concerns, which I received from John, from Walter, and from Flip and sent out um, to all of you. Um, I don't know if you checked your email about 4.30. That's about when John's came in. I got, it, I got it out shortly thereafter, around 4 o'clock. So assuming you had, uh, you've reviewed the plans, um, and certainly these aren't in stone, and there's some duplicate duplicates on them and we can add or delete to them as we go on but who would like to start the discussion i'm looking at walters flips and johns well Will, your your thoughts what's that i'm trying to pull them up uh, right now um they all seem very similar hmm. um pretty much uh, for the most part, they're all pretty similar. Um, raising of the fees, maintenance of the docks, um, and other equipment, facilities, uh, more personnel. Um, uh, I know John specifically stated the bathrooms quite a bit, um, which there is a plan uh, for remodeling and redoing or rebuilding the, uh, the bathhouse. I don't quite know why that was nixed uh, years ago. But um, there, there, we do have plans for that. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it, it's the planning of it and how, how should we go about the planning, I guess, is what we have to figure out of all the maintenance. Mostly, it seems that most of it's a maintenance issue slash uh, personnel. Um, and that I wondered if, would it be possible sometime for this committee to sit down with Will and have like a little retreat or a little work session where we could specifically talk about what we could do to assist him, you know, in all of these plans? And then maybe from that area, you know, come up with some formatted things because I think there are some things that could actually be done where, you know, we could not only advise, but we could maybe come up with some solutions to help and then we can set up a timeline, you know, instead of just, you know, talking about things. Does that sound reasonable? I mean, you know, we, we, we get together at a meeting, you know, like once a month and this is like a 15 or 20 minute part of the meeting and, you know, develop some plans. But I think that it would be really beneficial, you know, maybe we all sat down you know, for two or three hours, you know, at some point in time with Will and, and talked about this in depth and then maybe broke up into some subcommittees of what we could do to assist. Oh, a thought on, go ahead, Will. A thought on that um, would be um, for um, Will perhaps to start by, um, I mean, there's a lot of material in these three documents to start by what, he would like to do initially um, to put it down on paper as a plan and then at a, at a meeting with all of us present, um, you know, we'll talk about going forward. How does that sound? Yeah, I, I could put down um, everything. It, it will look like, pretty much exactly like uh, the plans that we've received. Now the timing would be a little better um, knowing how we're going to go forward, 
knowing what's going to happen going forward too um, and how we're going to go about that. So, well, looking at these, Will, don't you have some priorities that you'd like to focus on? Well, currently we've been doing kind of everything at once or all kind of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So I guess the main discussion would be how to go about uh, either focusing on things, um, setting budgets to hire out on things. Um, now, the, the problem I see with the, the monetary aspect of it is that um, nothing in the budget was changed for the upcoming year. So all money would have to be pulled from the current budget um, or maintenance or contracting things out or doing things. Um, now I know, I think personally, the replacement of uh, the continual replacement or the continuation of the replacement of the docks uh, going into D and then E um, would probably be the top priority. Um, and I think, you know, we don't have a lot of funding set aside for that. Um, it would just come out of the regular um, maintenance and repair budget is where it has been coming out of. Now, um, the maintenance and repair on the rest of the docks would require A, either the help to do it or uh, B, contracting it out to do it. So we'd have to look at what funds would be currently available to do that with and if we could do that and replace the sections of dock in the same uh, fiscal year coming up that the budget has been set on. And I think personally replacing um, the concretes is probably one of the highest priorities where I think they're dangerous. I think they're absolutely dangerous. They're, they're pretty ridiculous at this point. Um, and, and then, you know, that may just mean that we will be doing minor repairs to the other docks because that is going to chew up a lot of that money. Dave, I think you started to make a comment. No, I'm just going to say, you know, Will is the assistant harbor master right now. And if you look forward, Mike is going to eventually retire. Is that correct? I mean, we don't know when, or is he going to retire? And he gave, a date. he gave a date of December 31st. Well, then, you know what? I mean, you know, I hope Will is going to be the next harbor master, but we're going to lay all these plans out. And, you know, then if, if Will doesn't become the harbor master, what happens then? We start fresh again. So I don't want to be spinning wheels about trying to recreate or trying to do things and discuss things that are just going to go back to square one again. I want to be able to know that we're solid in who we have and, and that it's moving forward. That's where we are with the position. And, um, you know, if, if Will becomes the harbor master, I think he'll have a little bit more leverage to do what he wants right now. There's a lot of this going on and, and we're asking him questions that I don't think he can honestly give us a fair answer to because he doesn't have, you know, the backing of the town right now, as far as this whole thing goes. And not, not that he doesn't have the backing of the town. He doesn't have the, the, you know, the, the leverage to be able to just say, this is what we want. This is why we want it. You know, he's the assistant right now and he's not the acting. And Mike is, Mike is in, you know, is nowhere to be found. So it, it's, it's that much more difficult. And from what I understand, the answer that you got, Joe, when you asked who the harbor master is, your answer, the answer was uh, Michael Flanagan. So where are we at? That's, that's, that's where I'm at. And, and Martha asked the question about s starting dialogue about, you know, setting plans. I'm all for it, but you know what? If it, in July or in, you know, whenever the next hiree is, he has a whole different agenda. What are we doing? So, you know, that's, that's my point right now, you know. Uh, I'll would... touch on that, Dave. I'll touch on that. Um, I agree with you 100%, but we are a committee that, that forms uh, ideas for the future of the harbor. So we have to kind of stay at least, you know, on that line. That's all. I think we have to at least have the ideas, have stuff in the brew so that we, if there is a different person that comes along and 
uh, you know, at least we have a, an agenda that they can look at. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm all for that. You know, yeah. I, I just don't want to spend too much time on specifics right now and, and go forward with things that, that if, um, you know, we set it up and, you know, we put all this stuff into writing and, and, and try and get an action plan going. And, and uh, you know, there's a whole new regime that comes in that doesn't have the same philosophy. You know, it's a lot of time wasted and a lot of hard work and effort put on it. I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't accentuate the points we've been, we've been saying, because I think they're all great points. And I read, read all the action plans, but that's specifically why I didn't submit one. Because at this point, I, I don't know where we're at with everything. And I don't know, you know, how it's going to be achieved. So we all know what needs to be done. You know, we've, we've said it. Right. Um, the uh, other thing the jumps point. out. If, if, we, go ahead, Martha. No, if Mike is, if, is Mike formally submitted his resignation as of the 31st, or is it just in talk? And uh, if he has, you know, what's the uh, timeline for the town in appointing someone new? I mean, they have to advertise it for a couple months. Um, can somebody be appointed before Mike's actual ending date? No. no. They have to, they have to post it. They have to advertise it. No, oh, I know, I know that. But um, at what point are they going to post before. it? I mean, if they, if they have it in writing that he's leaving the thirty-first, um, you know, <laughs> I work for a municipality. I gave my notice like six months before I left, and they they hired somebody, you know, like two months before I left, and I spent a, a month training the person. That's right. Yeah, I've never seen that done in this town. That's for sure. <laughs> In looking over in looking over the three lists that have been submitted, it seems that there's immediate needs and there's a lot of long term thoughts about the future and how to develop a new growth. And I think Will put his finger on what I would agree is the most pressing immediate need. And he used the word danger in those stock areas in D&E. &E. I mean, you've got plywood covering holes that a small child could fall into. So the question I have is, if that's an immediate need, and I think it is, um, what kind of manpower to do maintenance in the fall? You know, there's going to be dredging the channel, so there's not going to be boating activity. Um, what kind of... Um, manpower do you have in the fall to tackle that priority? Not much. Um, will Dave be working with you? Uh, Dave Perry will, will be there as, as long as um, we can keep him. Uh, will and, Jamie be there? And hopefully Jamie will be as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the two other um, guys, uh, Dave Dalby and and then are leaving the second to last week of August. I think there's two last times. Was it the 31st or something? Or the 23rd, I think they're leaving of August. So then we'll be down two more staff. Um, recently, uh, Pete, the older uh, gentleman that worked with us, has resigned um, uh, his duty. Um, so we're down currently one more right now. Um, and then I don't know the uh, status on um, you know, what what Mike's uh, uh, hours will be. So there will be myself for sure. Um, hopefully Dave uh, Perry and hopefully Jamie um, will want to stay around for that. Now, looking into that, um, I know Dave is uh, retired. Um, he has a house, he's, he's pretty steady here, um, and he really enjoys this work, um, you know, for the most part. So I assume that he's going to be around um, until that time again, Christmas time or so. Uh, I don't think he wants to go banging nails out in the cold after that. Um, and, and Jamie, who knows? I mean, he's a 20 something year old guy. I know. Um, 
you know, I would certainly recommend him. I know there's a few other assistant Harbor master jobs coming up. I don't know whether he's interested in that or not. I know Barnstable's hiring right now for a starting salary of assistant Harbor master at uh, 74,000, um, which, you know, is pretty good. Um, but I don't know what his plan is for the winter. So I don't know how long he'll be around. It's hard to keep a guy at, you know, this, uh, this kind of pay too, you know, a temporary. Um, we've been pretty lucky uh, keeping both of them for now. Given those uncertainties that Will just outlined, it kind of reinforces what Dave was saying, that you really can't move forward, you know, until probably after the first of the year when these issues are resolved. I have one comment. Uh, I think that we should get the new town administrator involved in all this stuff. Uh, yeah. She, uh, you know, apparently is from Annapolis, is somewhat of a sailor or a water person. And, you know, she's got to be aware of what's happening down here because she's got power. You know, she can say, yeah. Uh, a priority. You, need, you know, especially with a, you know, a dangerous situation, you know, like th that's not yeah. just a maintenance thing down there at the end. That's, that's a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. That's that a liability. An liability as well. Right, exactly. Now, there must be some town fund that can be put to use for a dangerous situation like that. You know, and, and, and the town administrator would hopefully know about something like that or be able to research it. You know, I think, I think we ought to get a hold of her and, uh, and uh, tell her what's going on down there. You know, give her a tour. And, and you know, I, I think she may very well say and appropriately say what the leaving town administrator said to me when he was brand new i take my or orders from the selectmen and i can only do as much mm. in terms of power as they will allow me um, i still think she needs to hear it joe yeah oh, absolutely i'm not disagreeing no. with that at all not not one bit. I'm going to call on her as I did with Hort and the guy before him. Absolutely. So, but you got to hey, be Joe. fair. She's brand new. She's just well, yeah. new here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Joe. Sure. Joe, this is Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Um, so um, I know that I have scheduled a meeting with Maria and Will and maybe Mike if he goes for I think sometime at the end of the month. It's a Zoom meeting. So they can talk about that then. My plan for all the other boards and committees and big project stuff, you know, things like the dredging, she definitely needs to know about firsthand, really, probably sooner than later. But, you know, we have to kind of get her through town meeting, which is like a month away. Yeah. Um, but definitely, you know, go through Will and Mike to get to her and me as well, for sure. Yeah, and I'd like to represent the Marina Committee at that table. I think Mike has made it very clear. He doesn't show up. He doesn't contribute. He's not been the one dredging meeting recently. You know, he's a non-player and, and, you know, that's the reality. So, you know, I'd like to be at that table representing the committee with Will, you know, and meeting her with her and talking about the history of dredging and where we're at now. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, I go back to the beginning, almost seven years, Courtney. Yeah, 15. <laughs> There's a little bit more meat. So I'm going to leave it up to Maria to decide if she wants to have town board and committee members in on this meeting. It's really so she can meet the staff and learn from them. And then I'm sure Will can work with her to schedule a meeting with the, you and the committee shortly after that. Sounds good. Does anybody have any other comments or questions? Okay. New business, future concerns. Hmm. Anything? <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking at the calendar and four weeks would be September the 2nd. What does everybody think of that? I can't believe it's September. <laughs> In four weeks. <laughs> That's all right to me. It's okay to me. Uh, oh, September second. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. Where is my calendar? 
Martha, are you okay with that? I'm okay with September 2nd, yep. Flip? Yes. Yeah, Will? Yep. Dave? I, I can't think of any reason why no not. No problem. I can make it. Okay, all right, um, I'll put it down for uh, September 2nd, Wednesday at seven. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. I who, second. Who, who seconded? Flip. It? Flip. I did. Flip. I'm sorry. Who seconded? Flip. flip. Okay. Flip. At um, eight twenty-three. Thank you, everybody, and Courtney. Thank you very much. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Joe. You're welcome. Have a good night. Night. Thanks, Will. Good night. Good night.